Our pleasure now to be joined by Luke Johnson, covers the New Orleans Saints for the Advocate Nolan News. Luke, how we doing? I'm doing great, guys. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. So, uh, trade deadline fast approaching here in a matter of moments. Um, do you expect any movement? I don't imagine the quarterback spot, but at all with the Saints? No, I'm, I'm kind of not anticipating anything. If they did anything, I, I imagine it would be for a uh, pass catcher because that's still, I think, the weakest area on the roster. But uh, I, I think they're going to go forward with what they got at quarterback. And uh, and if they do make a move, it'll be uh, you know, wide receiver, tight end. But I'm, I'm really not anticipating anything's going to happen there. Jeremy and I were split, and we opened the show talking about what we think Sean Payton will do at quarterback. Who do you think takes the first snap on Sunday? I'd be surprised if it's not Taysom Hill. Um, I, I could be wrong. I, I think there's a, a kind of a, a growing wave of uh, of Saints fans who kind of want to see what Trevor Simeon can do after uh, he had played a pretty good game in the Leaf on Sunday. But I, I think it's I think Trevor is a uh, like a really capable backup quarterback, but I, I think he's probably going to be kind of limited as a starter. Um, and I, I, the Saints know what they have in Taysom, and I, I think they they know what they can do with him. Uh, he's you know, he only started four games, but they, they saw him start and they saw him play pretty well and, and win three out of those four. So, um, you know, I think it's Taysom. I think just based on Sean Payton's uh, history with the with the position, um, it, it would be surprising if uh, if it wasn't Taysom, if he's healthy, if he's good to go. But, you know, we'll, we'll kind of wait and see. You know, he's, he's playing the whole, uh, you know, we're not going to say who the starting quarterback is and, and playing up some of the mystery, so. You know, maybe maybe it will be Trevor Simeon, but I, I'd be surprised if it was. I know you said the Saints are probably going to stand pat at quarterback, but a name I keep hearing getting a little buzz is Cam Newton. How much truth do you think it is that the Saints have any interest in that? Uh, I'd be surprised. Um, yeah, I think they already have a like, – Taysom Hill is not Cam Newton, right? Uh, but he's, he's a similar type of player. Um, he's a big-body quarterback who can move. Um, you know, he, he plays with his athleticism, and I, I think – just his experience in this offense and, and the amount of time he's he's been here and he knows what he's doing, um, I, I think that's probably a big advantage for him over Cam. So, you know, I, I wouldn't be necessarily surprised if the Saints kick those tires, but um, I, I think they've already got a player like that here who's who's just more experienced in the system and, and it'd be a, a little bit of a surprise, I guess I'll say. All right, I guess we saw Taysom as the starting quarterback last year for, for some time. Any expectation that the offense would look any different than that, what we saw last year? Um, maybe a little bit, just because it'd be a longer-term thing, right? Um, you know, he's, he's not just kind of holding the fort down until Drew Brees gets back, yeah. or, or in this case, until Jameis gets back. Um, so maybe they'd add a few more wrinkles in there um, that, that they can do with Taysom that they can't really do with anybody else. Um, but I, I think generally the offense kind of is what it is. You know, it's been in place since 2006. Um, it's evolved since then, but um, you know, it, it's still <laughs> it's still Sean Payton's offense. Um, so you know, it would probably do some things that, that involve his athleticism a little bit more. Um, you know, I think Taysom improved a lot on those rollout passes, which was like it kind of blew my mind that that wasn't something that he was really good at when when they uh, kind of put him in that starting role last year. Um, so maybe that's you know, they, putting the quarterback on the move, doing a little bit more boot action uh, is, is something that they could potentially do. Um, but, you know, again, I, I just Sean Payton is what he is at this point, and he, he runs his offense, and I don't think it will drastically change depending on who's in there. What's a realistic timetable you would say for Michael Thomas to be put back into this offensive lineup? Shoot, that's a really tough question to answer. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I thought it, he would have been in the lineup at this point. Um, but you, you, they've kind of shrouded the entire thing with his with his ankle and his recovery and mystery. You know, he was on the sidelines on Sunday, so it's not like he's away from the team. Um, but you know, clearly he wasn't the same player when he came back last year before he was ready to come back. Um, and I don't know whether this is uh, Michael Thomas's decision or the team's decision, but, um, yeah, it, it looks like they're, they're waiting until he's, like, 100% healthy before they put him back on the field and just – not risking this being a long-term thing longer than it already has been. What did you make of Sean Payton's comments about the Dome not being loud enough on third down? Kind of just a little barb at a, a fan base that he knows loves him and supports the team. He doesn't have to worry about it and just wants to kind of get under their skin for the Falcons game? Yeah, I mean, I guess so. I don't, I don't really get it. It was loud in there on yeah. Sunday. Like, it was really loud. Um, you know, <laughs> I, I guess he's just uh, 
he knows he has all this, like, like you're saying, he knows he has all this goodwill, like built up in, in the organization within the fan base. Um, you know, he's not going anywhere. You can say some stuff like that and they're not going to be like, uh, you know, getting on him or anything, but, um, yeah, I don't know how legit that is. I, I thought it was really loud and maybe it's just because the crowd hasn't been there all, you know, for a year. Um, but that was like a Superdome environment, like like exactly what you remember it to be, or what at least what I remembered it to be. So um, maybe you know he is trying to just like egg him on a little bit and uh, you know, have him uh, down a couple more beers before they come in on Sunday against the Falcons and get really crazy. Um, but it sounded it sounded like the Superdome. I, I don't really know what he's saying. I don't know what he's getting at. I don't know what the end game is. But um, you know he's he's built up enough here to where I guess he can say stuff like that. How uh, serious do you think this uh, Saints team is, uh, uh, or how close do you think they are for challenging for home field in the NFC this year? Do you think they're there, or do you think they are pretty far off right now? Maybe if they were in the AFC, they could they could contend for it. Um, I think the NFC's got probably the five best teams in, in the NFL this year, um, and you know, just considering that they're going to be starting, you know, their number two or potentially number three quarterback, depending on how you look at it. Um, I think that's that's probably asking a lot. Uh, they got a couple of tough games coming up in the schedule, um, and you know I, I think it'll be a good season for the Saints if they can make the playoffs. I, I think that's priority number one, and to, to think about them as potentially a number one seed, I think is probably a little far off right now. We just need to kind of see where they're at with uh, with whoever starts a quarterback. But regardless, I, I think this team is the type of team that'll that'll travel well if it has to. Um, you know, their, their defense is legit, uh, one of the best in the NFL. And, yeah, I think that'll help them out and, and, and keep them in the race and, and maybe potentially challenge for that. But I, I think it's probably asking a little bit much right now. Two uh, long-term questions here, Luke, as we kind of take a, a, a bigger picture look at this. One is Dennis Allen. Obviously, been a head coach before. His defense has performed at such a high level. They've conf- been the only guys who can get in Brady's way. Do you think being an NFL head coach is in his near future? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I wrote about it last year. I, I thought uh, I thought he had a pretty good chance of doing it last year. And for some reason, he's just not like the hot name. Even though, yeah, I think for the last like four years now, the Saints have been you know one of the NFL's premier defenses. He's really changed that organization around. Like this has been a a franchise that has been known for its offensive exploits, and he's really gotten that defense to be the the kind of leading unit on this team and the team that's kind of, the unit that's kind of carried the team so if he's not getting a look this offseason I, I think people are, are you're doing a, a disservice to themselves because you know he's, he's had the experience and he had it in like a really rough organization to be a first-time head coach with the, with the Raiders um he's he's got a really good pedigree being on this Sean Payton staff with a lot of other assistants that have gone on to, to be successful coaches elsewhere um, so I think he deserves a shot, absolutely, and I, I think he'll he'll at least get a chance to interview for some jobs this off season. Um, and you know, I think the Saints should be potentially bracing themselves for having to hire a new DC next year. All right, that is our snapshot of Jameis Winston as the franchise quarterback of the Saints. What is his future now as he goes to the operating table? That is a huge question, yeah. and you know, obviously, this is if Jameis was betting on himself coming here this off season, right? Um, he, he signed a, another one year deal. It, it was, you know, incentive heavy and, and, you know, he's, he's not making as much money as he probably could have commanded somewhere on the open market. Um, and obviously this is a huge setback for him. Um, you know, quarterbacks have come back from ACLs in the past and I, you know, it's not like it, Jameis is like a, a pretty good scrambler, but it's not like he's Lamar Jackson where you worry about him and, and having this, um, you, you know, this, this knee injury that could potentially affect how he can run. So, I mean, I think there's going to be interest in him this off season, but it's definitely not, you know, probably what he was expecting where he's going out and throwing for 4,500 yards and 35 touchdowns or whatever it is in 17 games and, and commanding a, a salary north of $20 million a year. This is a really tough situation for him. And you kind of wonder if he's, if he's in the Saints' long-term future or long-term plans, if if uh, if he's going to you know, try to sign another one-year deal to prove it again, um, but it, it definitely throws that whole thing into question right now, and that's you know really unfortunate for Jameis, obviously with the last couple uh, years that he's been through here, um, but it, you know it's it's kind of the reality of the situation. Enjoy the dome on Sunday, Luke. We'll be watching. Thanks.
Always a pleasure, guys. Thank you. At by Luke Johnson on Twitter, Saints beat writer for The Advocate and NOLA News.